to start things off, I felt like it would be super fun for us to um, talk about Batman. But uh, unfortunately, Phoenix was not able to get out and watch the new Batman movie that just dropped. And three hours, man. <laughs> I know. Three hours. Well, here's the issue. So it's three hours, which, you know, it's is crazy. a time commitment. But my wife wants to see it, too. And mm-hmm. we're both just, you know, slam schedule-wise. So finding time over the weekend to try, you know, get a three-hour movie in just has not been something in the cards Dude, right now. the last half hour, I had to go to the bathroom so bad. But I did. <laughs> I, I don't know how I was uh, able to not... Not pop. Well, that's why you, you get the really big cup, so then when you never <laughs> yeah. really have to go, you just, you know, do your thing. <laughs> Listen, I used to work at a movie theater, ask Phoenix. I wouldn't want to have to clean that, <laughs> grab that cup afterwards, uh, clean in that theater. Uh, so shout out to all of my uh, fellow movie theater peeps. Um, but yeah, so I figured, let's talk Batman anyways. Or Phoenix threw the idea at me, and I thought it would be super cool for us to kind of each... Um, pick out our favorite Batman movie. We're going down the uh, super nostalgia trip. Well, before, before we do that, um, I mean, I do want to get your opinion because I haven't talked to you at all about the new movie, and I certainly don't oh, want yeah. to spoil it. No, for no, me, no. But, um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, is it what you were kind of hoping out of that movie, or did you feel like anything was disappointing, or did you go into it like low expectations and it exceeded those? Like, I know you're a bigger. I, I hate to say you're a bigger Batman fan than me because I'm definitely a Batman fan, but I know your favorite superhero. In your, yeah, he's probably your you know top guy. So he's probably what in your, your second, opinion. probably your second favorite behind Spider Man. Yeah, Spidey's probably always gonna have a top spot, but Batman's like mm, right he's up my, there. He's my he's my favorite. Um, I'm glad you asked. I mean, I wasn't going to you know just give you my thoughts because I wanted you to kind of um, enjoy it for yourself. But I, for very surface level opinions on it, it's very mixed. I would say for like the first. Maybe the first half an hour to the first hour, I was thinking it was going to be the greatest Batman movie I had ever seen. It really gets things like aesthetic, environment, themes. It really gets all that stuff right when it comes to Batman. But unfortunately for me, in my opinion, towards the latter end of the movie, it starts to make a few decisions that are like not necessarily bad, but it's just a little uninteresting. Um, okay. and that's pretty much it. Like, like all of the acting is incredible. Like, I loved Zoe Kravitz. I loved Robert. Robert Pattinson was a really good Batman. Um, trying to be as non-spoilery as I can. Like, the Penguin sure. was awesome. The Riddler was awesome. I did not realize until like two weeks ago that the Penguin was freaking Colin Farrell. It's Colin Farrell like, and Paul Dano is the Riddler. Yeah, Paul Dano, I knew. He's but awesome. Freaking- that makeup for Colin Farrell is freaking ridiculous. Colin like, Farrell was so good, they're giving him his own TV show. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, some sort of... Uh, I, I think they're calling it Gotham PD or something, which is very mm. similar to that other Gotham show. I, I don't know. know. It was kind of like with a comic relief in that movie a little bit. He was awesome. He's like, yeah, he was... The movie does a great job of just kind of getting characters right. Like... Like, like you were saying, like, Penguin feels very penguiny, even though he doesn't smoke in the entire movie, which apparently Warner Brothers, like, when they gave this director the reins for the movie, they were like, he cannot smoke. I guess that was one of the few things that... Yeah, it's a big faux pas nowadays. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like, Penguin's awesome. The Riddler... Riddler's really good, but he, <coughs> he's definitely a different take. So... Mm-hmm. I personally enjoyed him, but I could very easily see some people not, you know, particularly enjoy him. All right. And you said you like Pattinson. Like, it, where would he rank for you, like, just um, in regards to all the Batmans out there that we've seen live action wise? Um. Uh, it's really hard. Cause, again, I don't want to give anything away. He, mm-hmm. he plays a good Batman, but. They don't really give you much of the Bruce Wayne, you know, archetype. So it's it's almost, in my opinion, it's almost impossible to say whether he was a good Bruce Wayne or not. Which mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if that I don't want that to spoil for you, but like, I, yeah, I, that won't spoil it. I mean, I, I guess I'm asking because I've 
Mm -hmm. I've been trying to, you know, avoid the spoiler reviews and whatnot, but I've definitely been trying to get different takes from people, kind of seeing how they feel about, like, you know, patents and performance and whatnot. And overall, I mean, you know, I hear favorable things, but I'm hearing very mixed things on his Bruce take in particular. Like, most people there, like him as Batman. There but is no Bruce people, take. There is. I've had some, there's a couple of things I've watched uh, from certain reviewers that were acting like they really like this very kind of subdued, subtle, brooding Bruce, which other people are like, yeah, I don't know, it leaves a lot to be desired. So I was kind of curious on where you stood He's on He's basically, it. I, I, what I got from this movie is that they very much were getting across the idea that that this Batman had almost totally engulfed Bruce Wayne. Like, the, mm -hmm. like he really, ha like they even, <clears throat> oh gosh, I was going to say there's a scene. Um, there's even parts where he's kind of negligent with his company. Mm -hmm. So he's very, oh, gosh, he's very untied to his Bruce Wayne ego, alter ego. Or I guess Batman would be the alter ego. But like... Well, that's the whole point, though, isn't it? Like, Bruce Wayne really is the alter ego. Like, yes. Batman is who he really is. And I like um, that. I actually like that yeah. aspect of the movie. It makes it more realistic. If you would think a guy wearing tights, going out, climbing rooftops, beating up criminals with his hands... I could imagine that person's got a few screws loose and it would be really mm -hmm. hard for them to to you know to hide in hide in society like it's it's not a stretch to imagine he would have problems blending in you know All right how old is he supposed to be in this movie like I know it's supposed to be like his what second year being Batman but as like a character like how old is his Bruce Wayne? He's in like his twenties, his thirties. Because I know Pattinson is probably in what like his late thirties at this point. I thought he was like early mid thirties. Is he that old? Is he, is he older? Than, oh, I don't know I how old he is. Um, I don't know. That, that means I'm older than Pattinson. Oh no. <laughs> I, I, thought I, I, I I thought he I thought he just played someone his age. I mean, I didn't I didn't really. Well, I guess I ask because I think that kind of depends on how I would, I don't know, picture his Bruce Wayne fitting into that society. You know, like, if he's a really young Bruce Wayne and he hasn't figured out kind of the purpose of the Bruce Wayne, uh, Wayne like, um, what's a good way to say this, that alter ego, then I can kind of see how maybe he just gets, you know, caught up in the whole Batman side of things. But I definitely, if he's a Bruce Wayne who's in his, like, late 30s, then you would think he's probably got more of a rein on things at that point. I definitely Once think... Speaking without seeing the movie. I definitely think in the movie there is a sense that... He, he he does begin to see the importance of the Bruce Wayne alter ego. Um, so I do think he is probably fairly young. He, he, he does seem like maybe he's meant to be like mid mid to late twenties, maybe early thirties. Mm. Yeah, he's okay. not he's not meant to be an older person. He he does seem like someone who's learning on the on the on the you know on the move and and again they do give you the sense that he he sees how, um, um, shoot, I can't think of the word. He sees how vulnerable the, the, you know, the Bruce Wayne aspect of him is. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Was there anything else? <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, that's all good. As I know it's probably hard for you to really get into details without, you know, edging into spoiler territory, and I don't want you to do that. Uh, um, um, but so how do you think he compares to like, um, you know, Christian Bale? Like, I'm assuming that's who the Batman you probably would have put up there, kind of like high-ranking Batman live-action um, actors up till now. So, do you think he is better than Bale, less than Bale, equivalent? Um. <clears throat> oh man, that's tough. I mean. I or is Bale not your, you know, runner-up? Bale is not my favorite Batman. Oh, well, then who, who would that be? I, I'm i probably, you know, out on a loan on this. I always really liked Val Kilmer. I thought Val Kilmer was a fine Batman. And I even like Michael oh, Keaton. Yeah. I think Keaton and... Well, never, never mind. My favorite Batman is Kevin Conroy. But if we're talking live-action Batman... Um, I would say Keaton or, or Kilmer are like my favorites, and then just mm. below that would be Bale. Bale was not a bad. Okay. I was kind of, kind of indifferent on Bale. So Pattinson kind of ranks like like third or fourth then for you. Yeah, I mean he's definitely above Clooney. He's definitely above Ben Affleck. Mm. Um, oh gosh. See, I okay, so I'm really gonna probably be in the minority for this. Um, although I think he's been in some of the worst Batman movies. 
I think my favorite Batman is probably Ben Affleck. Really? Like, the more I think about, like, and part of it, maybe it's just the aesthetic of it. Like, and that's probably, I think it's, it's hard for me right now. And not that I don't think I'm going to like the new movie, but Pattinson just, I don't know, he doesn't have, for me, look like Batman. I don't know, he looks a little too young. And I think part of it is like, okay, if I can really think of this as, okay, it's just his first couple of years as Batman. He's going to, you know, you know, age up and grow into this more, you know, mature Batman. That'd be one thing, but... Pattinson's always going to have that baby face. He's, mm-hmm. he's always going to seem like a young Batman, even when he's, you know, a veteran. So I think that's what I liked about Affleck was he had that, I mean, that experienced look, but I don't know. He had some, I don't know. He, I just think, I had, think they're both, they're both, um, they're both kind of stinted by the movies they were in. Like, I feel like... Yeah, well, that's what I'm, I'm not judging the movie right now. Like, if we're talking about Batman movies, mm-hmm. uh, nothing regarding Affleck would be on the table for me. I feel like I'm Affleck... I'm just looking purely at, you know, the performances that mm-hmm. you know, they had no, to work I get what with you're and the way they looked. Well, the reason why I don't put Affleck up towards my top is not because of him himself. It's because the movies he was in were not great. Like, and, and, and you could say that's kind of unfair way of looking at Affleck. And maybe I'm looking at pattinson more favorably because the movie he was in was just Mm -hmm. better um sure i mean you have favor by association just because he was in a better you know you know production so i get that yeah and that's kind of that's kind of the way i feel pattinson was fine i mean i more like the idea that just like they get they get the batman character right i think that's what makes it feel like he's a Mm -hmm. good batman he's not like fantastic but they, they get him right they get his his the, his, thematically, he's he's correct. One cool thing about the movie is um, I won't go into specifics, but they definitely make Batman more the world's greatest detective in this one. Which I'm curious to see if you like that aspect or dislike it. He, um, I mean, I if it plays out well, I'm going to like that because that's definitely a core part of you know Batman's character. Um, this Batman is definitely smarter than a lot of other Batmans. Um, so yeah, uh, what else did you want to go straight into my movie? Yeah. I mean, I, I know you were kind of want to get into like what your favorite, like overall Batman movie is. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, go, go to that one kind of branch off from there. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I'm actually really excited to talk about this movie. I feel like it's a Batman movie that a lot of people overlook mainly because it is animated. I feel like a, a lot of people look over a, a lot of the DC animated films and it's the same thing with the Marvel stuff, right? Like, I would say a lot of those mov- movies get looked over. Oh, certain movies I feel like get looked over. Like, did you ever get to see, uh, what was it, um, Doctor Strange? Did you ever see the Doctor Strange animated movie? I did. Um, I tell you, the Marvel animated doesn't usually do it for me as much. Like, they're usually fine, but I mean, I would definitely lean on, if we're talking about animated um, feature length films, mm-hmm. then um, the DC Universe by far has the better ones. Like, uh, you're right. I know where you're going with your animated series one, but even just like some of the like more standalone ones, like was it Under the Red Hood? I thought was really mm-hmm. good. I was good. Um, and, I mean, there's a bunch of them. Um, oh man, I haven't watched um, the newest ones at the Long Halloween. Have you seen that yet? No, no. I've heard pretty good things about that. I liked the one they did recently. Um, it was what Batman versus the Ninja Turtles or something. I didn't get to watch that one. That, that was, was a comic, I think. Too. Yeah, yeah, it was based off one of the old comics. Um. But yeah, I mean, I like where DC does with the animated, usually more so than a lot of their, you know, actual live action stuff. So I can definitely get behind that. But I mean, most people, I mean, they still have the stigma that an animated film is a children's film or a children's kind of a um, form of entertainment, which mm-hmm. I, I think that uh, paradigm has shifted a lot over the past 10, 15 years or so. But you still got that stigma. And I think best, especially at the time that I don't know if you said it yet. Do, well, go go into your movie. I'm, yeah. I'm going to jump ahead if I do. No, I guess just some basic info on it. I mean. The reason why this movie is so good is, like, as you were saying, is a lot of uh, its ties to other fantastic um, series, as the animated series was. I mean, I think me and you would agree that that's a fantastic TV show. One of the all-time... I don't think you officially said the name of the movie. Oh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, yeah I was trying to avoid it because you hadn't done the big review. <laughs> no, no, it. yeah. Um, yeah, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't know, the movie was... Uh, co-directed by two people by eric redomsky who is the co-creator of the animated series so that's why it's 
so fantastically tied into that show. Um, it was also directed by Bruce Tim, who's basically, from what I've read and understand, he's basically one of the major creators mm-hmm. of the entire DC animated universe. Yep. Which is kind of cool. Did, do you, did he have ties to the comics? or did, I don't know. Didn't he? Um, I I'm could sure, be wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm always he, bad about remembering co- um, comic authors. I'm, I'm pretty so. sure he probably has ties to that or something. But uh, yeah, once again, it's basically um, Batman Master of the Phantasm is based on Batman the Animated Series. It's almost like an extension, although I'm sure it takes a few liberties here or there. But um, essentially, the movie came out in 1993, which was almost a year after I was born. Uh huh. There you go. Make me feel old, Chaz. I know. That's how old this movie is. Uh, a, a cool little tidbit is this was actually the first DC animated movie to release theatrically. Um, and basically, they kind of pushed it out the door very quickly. And due to them doing that, it actually failed at the box office. But mm-hmm. after its home media release, it became so successful that it basically paved the way for Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, which is another great mm-hmm. movie that I have. I need to watch that one. I actually haven't watched that one in a long time. And another movie it helped kind of fund is Mystery of the Batwoman. Um, what about you? Have you get to see any of those? I've seen the Sub Zero one, and I haven't seen the Batman one one. Um, so I picked up was it the Blu-ray a while back of the mm-hmm. whole animated series, and it had Mask of the Phantasm in there, and it had um, uh, Sub Zero. I uh, don't think it had the Batwoman one. I had that VHS, the black case copy for Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, yeah. I still have it in my garage. But yeah, I did too. But, like, every time I would watch it, it would always play the trailer for Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero. And that was, like, the coolest freaking trailer. I just, I I kind of remember just the voice acting and all that stuff that they kind of had for it. Um, But that's basically all the notes I had. I mean, uh, what about you? Were there any, like, major things that you remember about the movie that we can go into? I mean, it's been a while since I've you know watched it in earnest. I mean, I definitely remember like elements of it. Um, I mean, what always kind of sells through with that movie is just you know Kevin Conroy and Hamill. Like, mm-hmm. and that's not just looking at the movie. Like, I mean, I think most people, if they can separate you know the animated uh, facet from the live action, those are probably two of the truest um, incarnations of those two characters. Like, there's other good um, you know iterations of them and reimaginations, but. I think you said it earlier, Conroy is Batman to me. Um, oh, he's and, so I mean, good. I mean, granted, it's his voice and acting married with the visuals of the show. Like, it's, I can't really separate those. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, of course, he was also the voice in the Arkham series, and same thing with Hamill. Oh. So those incarnations of the characters, I think, truly fit, at least how I've always imagined Batman. But that's what I've grown up with, too. Um, I think that's kind of why, uh, I don't know, Pattinson it's hard for me to like really feel attached to really any Batman. Like there's an aesthetic to it and just like a personality to it. None of them are Conroy. I mean, to be fair, no one's ever going to be Conroy, but no one even really feels like it gets close to me. I feel like at least like Affleck from a stylistic standpoint kind of had that look, you know, he kind of looked like the animated series, a little mm-hmm. thicker. Um, he kind of moved a little more like the um, Arkham Batman. And honestly, I liked his portrayal of both Batman and Bruce. He got terrible material, but that was probably the closest live action Batman I've seen that harkens back to the Kevin Conroy days from an aesthetic. Once again, the way they treated those characters completely different. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's why I base almost every Batman thing off of now is does it have those animated series vibes? Can I picture that Kevin Conroy Batman on this new actor? And honestly, that's probably very unfair of me. I probably need to be a little more open as far as letting these actors kind of do their own thing with it and reimagine the character. But that's what I grew up with, man. I was a kid in the '90s watching animated series mm-hmm. every afternoon. Um, so I don't know. I, I've, and then Hamill is great. Yeah, I, f- I feel like as you were saying, the reason why this movie kind of—I mean, truly, in my opinion, the standout for this movie is Batman and Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. It really nails it. It nails not just of that character, but it nails like showing the 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 different faces of each character in the movie like like kevin conroy like perfectly balanced like the scenes where he's playing bruce the billionaire playboy and then Mm. and then there's other scenes where he's playing like the tortured and grieving son uh he's i feel like that was one of the few times like it felt like bruce wayne wasn't always the alter ego like if you think about it in most kind of you know incarnations especially nowadays like 
Bruce Wayne once again. That's the mask, right? Batman is the true uh, character, and mm-hmm. the Bruce Wayne's the alter ego. But in that movie, it showed him trying to actually be Bruce Wayne. I mean, you know, stepping it out out of the Dude, Batman light a little a, bit. There's a scene that's so incredible. Every time I watch it, there's a scene where um, Bruce is, you know, fallen head over heels over Andrea Beaumont. Who's who? Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler, sorry guys. She plays the phantasm in the movie. Oh no, no, I can't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers for a almost thirty year. Jeez, that movie's almost thirty years old. Um, oh my heart. I know. Um, but yeah, it. There's a scene where where you know Bruce, Bruce, you know, of course, he makes this promise to his parents that um, I don't know exactly what the promise was, but I'm guessing it has something to do with he's gonna fight crime and you know you know, gain, you know, prevent other, other children or other people from having to go through what he's been, been put through. And there's this incredible scene where like, you know, he's falls heads over heels with Andrea Beaumont and he's like at their, um, yeah, the grave, he's right? at the graveyard. Yeah. And he's like at their tombstone, like in the rain on his knees, like begging them to like, why can't I be happy? Yeah. Or that he says, um, he says, I, I want to fulfill your promise, but something happened that I wasn't expecting. I I, I became happy, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's just like a really like heartfelt, like, like scene of this guy who has this thing that he knows he needs to do. But, you know, is his happiness something important to him or something that he should seek out? And is it like, is, is he is he letting down his parents and like. It's an incredible scene, and then Andrea, um, or he says, uh, he says, just give me a, you know, uh, give me a message or something, and she's like, they already did, or, or she's like, I'm your message, you know, it's okay to let go, or something, and like, mm. scenes like that are just, are like, fr- so like, emotional. like, so, so emotional. emotional, it's, the, <laughs> I will say, like, like, if you dislike the brooding, like, just emo sadness of Batman, this is probably, like, top tier emo batman (laughs) he's just like but but the good thing is is it's it's not just that though they're good no no go for it i was just saying it's not just like like the heights of his sadness and like his his vengeance and regrets and everything is also offset in the movie by the love he has with andrea and and you know him and all the stuff going on between them so it's like a perfect dichotomy of him and it's even it's even further enhanced because she's going through all of the exact same things he's going through you know that's why she's it's such a it's such a like it's almost like they're almost too perfect of a couple for each other because they both have almost the exact same motivations they're both equally as in love with one another but they're both out seeking revenge and revenge is just like at the end scene where she wants to to kill the Joker or something, he's like, Andrea, revenge, revenge won't do this. And, and she's like, it's too late for me. And it, and it sounds just like it's coming out of his mouth, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and in a way, in, in a way that's really cool. Cause it takes the whole idea of Batman's revenge. You know, he's always vengeance. I am vengeance, you know, and it kind of, yeah, she kind of is what Batman would have been if, you know, he didn't have the same yeah. code, the same restrictions. Mm-hmm. It's, he basically is looking at a mirror or, you know, a different, you know, path that he could have taken and how we kind of pulled away from that but it's heartbreaking to kind of see how that all kind of played out that really he can't ever be happy based upon mm-hmm. the life and the responsibilities he's got, got to live up to and some of the best superhero movies are built on that like a lot of spider-man stories same thing like there he tries to you know balance his love life and his friends and all this other stuff to have both worlds and it's kind of realizing that you can't always have both worlds batman definitely takes that more extreme where he just gives a privilege to everything but mm-hmm. Batman, but um, still, it's always fun to see that dichotomy. And what's really cool in this movie is that you have all of this, like, really deep emotional scarring, and you have all these people that are, like, you know, trying to seek, seek vengeance or seeking closure with things, and then just mm-hmm. in the middle of this movie, just drop the Joker. And, like, that's what this movie is. It's just, like, all, it's all this, like, emotional drama, and then it's just, like, the Joker just in the middle just just like not giving a crap about what everyone's dealing with and mark hamill is just so again like he's perfect man mark hamill is just there isn't a better joker there just is not 
Well, of that variety. Like, I'm not going to try to downplay any of the other great Joker performances out there. Like, you, you can't really compare, like, a Hamill Joker to a Ledger Joker, to even, like, a Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Like, they all did amazing jobs, but very different takes on it. I mean, my personal favorite take is Hamill, but once again, that's clouded in nostalgia. And even with that being said, he is still a fantastic Joker. Um, I just anyway, think... So I, I just think what... It's, it's not necessarily the difference in acting. I mean, obviously, Heath Ledger is a great actor. Obviously, Jack Nicholson is a great... They're different characters. Like, yeah. They are not the same Joker. Just like, not every Batman is the same Batman. Like, the <laughs> Bale Batman is not the animated series Batman. That doesn't make him a bad Batman. It just makes him a different Batman. Mm. They were all still acted well. So, I you know, trying to argue which one is better is often a moot point. Like... You're going to have to, you know, have your preferences on what kind of, you know, universe you like Batman in versus what kind of, you know, stylistic preferences you have. Um, and for me, it's always going to kind of come back to that animated series stuff. And a lot of it, um, I'll say it again, it's nostalgia. I grew up with it, but there was just an innate quality and just passion to what that team did. Hamill and Conroy and all those guys. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have a question for you um, before we get too far into anything else. So yeah. you kind of mentioned it earlier that, I mean, one of the... I guess drawbacks to Mask of the Phantasm is, I mean, drawbacks such a bad way to say this because in many ways this was also the boon to it, but the fact that it was animated, right? Mm -hmm. um, what if they could release that movie, even if they released it now, but in a live action format? Do you think that would play as well? Or is that something that really only works either like in an animated format or only works with Conroy and Hamill? Or could they adapt that um, iteration and that story to the big screen now? And do you think it would be successful? I don't. I, I just, I don't see it. I I feel like just the animated form or the, the animated form, you know, way of making movies or TV shows. I just, I feel, I don't, I, I can't quite necessarily put my finger on it. But there's just, there's a certain way that they can find ways of condensing information or condensing scenes that, I don't know. Like, I, I, I can't explain it. Like, like, that movie is only an hour 15 minutes long and you compare that to what i just watched in the batman which is <coughs> which is like three hours and it's like i don't really necessarily think there was a big difference in like the amount of information or or emotion that's that's gotten across i just i i think that's what the benefit of animated form is is that you can just you can do so much more with that and and mm -hmm. let's be honest it I mean, comics uh, comics are yeah. closer to, to cartoons than they are real life, so maybe it's easier to get across things from comics to animated form, you know? Uh, I So I inherently kind of... I feel like I want to disagree with that. I'm just trying to form my thoughts on why. Um, you mean with, with, the with there being... With the condensing? Well, with, yeah, I don't think the condensing <laughs> is necessarily a... Um, you know, a... Uh, what's, how do I want to say this? like a cause and effect kind of thing because it's animation they're able to condense things more like part of it is the audience they're trying to put it towards they are trying to tell a shorter story like there's nothing inherent i think necessarily about animation that's gonna condense the format like you could put that format into live action and still have the same information come across i think it's the way it is presented to the audience is maybe a little different but i don't think the movie being animated or not is really about condensing like really that comes down to good writing um, I think part of it is maybe is the expectation. If I'm seeing a live action movie, uh, there's a length to it and kind of an uh, expected kind of expository nature that I'm going to be kind of um, expecting to interact with. That an anime movie, maybe your expectations are lower in that regard. But there's a lot of anime movie, anime movies that are not condensed. Like they are lengthy, big deals mm -hmm. um, that have a lot of not just running time, but a lot of expository and whatnot. So. I don't think that is necessarily in relation just to it being animated. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that that movie wasn't more condensed, but I think that was probably more of a writing and a um, you know a story-driven choice on how they decided to structure the narrative opposed to it just being animated. Like, I'm not saying it would work well live action. I mean, I haven't really put a whole lot of thought into it. I just kind of thought of the question. Um, but I'm not really too sure if there's too much hindering it. Like, 
from a like effect standpoint, there's nothing super over the top that they did through animation that I don't think we could do just as well with live action. Like they proven time and time again, you can do anything you want in live action and make mm-hmm. it look pretty good. So I don't think from that standpoint it'd be an issue. I think probably the biggest issue, especially if you're building off of that you know original version, is you're bringing the weight of those uh, performances. You're bringing the Conroy. You're bringing the Hamill. And I don't know if you could ever find a substitute for that in a live action world. Like, because you can't put Hamill and Conroy on live action screen and play mm-hmm. those characters. They just don't fit the visual aesthetic to well, it. Well, what, um, what also could have, could have attributed to the whole <clears throat> idea of condensing with this movie is the fact that, again, you have a guy like Bruce Tim co directing it who, you know, is very tied to either the comics or to the movies. So. Maybe that's another benefit is that you have someone who knows what information is important, who knows what scenes are important and what's not. Whereas maybe some of the more modern live action movies, you have more directors who aren't necessarily tied to that IP, but they're tied to just movie making. You get what I'm saying? How I do. How you have someone who's making a movie, but just because that person is knowledgeable in how to make a movie doesn't necessarily mean they know how to take information or take scenes from comics and, and and relay that or and relay it in shortest terms, you know, or or relay what's important or it's not. It's a tricky thing to um, cause you got to think about this too. When Mask of the Phantasm came out, it was very much high off the heels of the animated series. You could probably wager just about anybody going to go see Mask of the Phantasm had was watching watched. the TV show. Yeah, so the background expository all the extra stuff you need to understand about the characters and whatnot you already know going into it and i think the expectation of your audience knowing that stuff is you know it's grounded like you that's not you know a big ask to assume that okay my audience is going to understand this iteration of batman because of how popular it was at the time but like when you look at you know the brand new the batman that just came out they're trying to rebuild a whole new iter- like incarnation of this character in this world so they need more time to go ahead and flesh that out. So I don't know. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, I'm, I haven't watched Once Again Mask and the Phantasm in many, many years. So I, I can't really speak to exactly how I feel the pacing would be now looking back on it. Um, but I don't know. I don't think necessarily the length that you're talking about is attributed directly to animation. So mm-hmm. if we removed that factor, I don't know, I'm curious if you would think it would play out differently live action. If that was your only concern. Yeah. Um, but, 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 let's see. I mean, I guess one more thing is I kind of wanted to just expound a little bit on the Joker's kind of part in the movie. Like, Mm. it's so kind of neat how well they incorporate him into the movie. Because it isn't just, as I was saying before, where they just drop him in. He literally, he literally does have a tie to the plot and story. And it's like, it's so cool how they kind of do it because they do this whole scene where, um, essentially, (laughs) if again spoilers the joker in the movie basically in his previous life basically was a henchman for like this mob boss who is what's his name i have his name right here he was a salve the weezer Velestra or salve salvator or whatever but yeah he he basically was they, what's cool is that they don't really give you the background knowledge or they don't really explain how he became the joker but they kind of leave that to you where it's like well maybe he fell into a pit of Whatever that stuff was, you know, like, however he lost his mind. But, I, like I said, it's just, it's really cool. There's a whole scene where, like, Bruce Wayne and Alfred are looking at pictures, old pictures of the, the mob boss. And you see this weird guy with this weird smile in the background. And, and Batman picks up this little red pen or pencil and draws, like, a big smiley face. And the Joker's laugh, Mark Hamill's laugh comes into frame. Or, and it's, like, the, the, just the way they kind of, like, have... Uh, scenes framed and and set up. It's really cool. Um, ba, 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 let's see. But basically, I guess how the Joker gets involved is um, is because this phantasm that shows up in the city starts uh, goes around and starts killing all of these mob bosses who happen to be tied into this old gang. Joker basically gets involved because once again they're members of his old gang. And the cool thing though that I actually really appreciate about the Joker's aspect in this movie is I don't really think he gives two licks about his old gang, which is kind of just funny and cool. I mean, they make it seem as though he kind of does, but in my opinion, I think he's just involved because he wants to 
hang, you know, annoy Batman, <coughs> which is really, you know, it, it's the Joker is very, to me, he's he seems very on brand. Like he he it, he may have some sort of tie, but he's just involved just because he wants to be involved, you know. Yeah, well, that's always my favorite incarnation of um, Joker. Is like he's not about running, you know, a big organization necessarily. It's all kind of a means to an end kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. his deal is always going to be messing with Batman. So as long <laughs> as that's kind of at the core of his character, you know, kind of being flippant about everybody else, you know, kind of fits his his nature. And I'll just go. Or oh, there's a bunch of different scenes I should say. There's like so many audio cues from this movie that like are just ingrained into my brain. Every time the Phantasm shows up to kill one of the mob bosses, all you hear is, Your angel of death awaits, Chucky Soul, or Your angel of death awaits, Buzz Bronski, which is that awesome scene in the uh, in the graveyard where she, she kills him while he's like in, in the pit. She kills him with the tombstone, and mm -hmm. there's so many just cool audio cues. Uh, yeah, the angel of death awaits. There's little cues that I just like remember from this movie like Batman stepping on the door that's sitting on this henchman and I always just I hear that sound and there's the sound of Chucky Salt scream as his car is flying through the air and I don't know <clears throat> just like just like the way they did audio is just absolutely perfect yeah yeah and I mean I like this movie had you know a darker tone like it wasn't mm -hmm. exactly you know a rated R animated movie or anything, but it definitely took a darker turn, even above and beyond where the animated series went. The animated series is already, you know, fairly dark in a lot of as aspects, so mm -hmm. nice to see them take that a little bit further for the, um, you know, the feature length. Yeah, and I guess just a few couple other things. I I really like the scene where Batman, um, where Bruce Wayne is is uh, walking down the street with Andrea, and he's like, has be started to become a vigilante but not quite the batman yet and he sees this old guy getting mugged by this like group of three guys and it's just an incredible scene of like bruce wayne being heroic but ultimately getting his behind handed to him because he gets hit with a baseball bat and the bad guys still get away and there's mm -hmm. there's just like a whole sense of like he can do more and stuff oh and he like superman punches this guy that's on a bike and it's like an incredible scene just awesome um, I guess just the last thing I wanted to talk about with this movie is overall its ending, man. Its ending is just so freaking good. Like, one thing I really appreciate, and I wrote this in my notes because I wanted to make sure I wrote it or I talked about it, <coughs> and is the, uh, do you remember the future world in the movie? Like, kind of like the weird futuristic theme yeah. park that's in it? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I never thought about it, but, like, something I caught on um, is, like, kind of the imagery that that place takes within the movie because like earlier in the movie it's like bright brand new it's open it's shiny and and earlier in that mo and when it's like that it's because like him and uh andrea are like totally in love and he doesn't feel pressured to be the batman and like and it's just like it it you know it kind of just like shows where they're it kind of just is imagery of where their lives could have been Mm -hmm. And then towards the end of the movie, like, I really get the sense that, like, um, that, like, the the place, start, the future world starts becoming destroyed and it looks like crap. There's, like, it's dark and everything. <coughs> and I get the very much the sense that the imagery just, like, shows kind of where their lives are going or what, you know, where their futures are ending up and essentially with, like, revenge, hate, loss, despair taking hold. I don't know. I just kind of really like that imagery. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I mean, I haven't seen those scenes in a while. You could also argue, I suppose, that um, because they're kind of ending up in that same location, it's kind of how, like, you know, holding on to the past in mm -hmm. a way. I mean, that, that's the whole thing. Oh, like, that's she true. can't yeah. give up what she was. There's no way to move beyond that and how, like, that's kind of, like, tainting her future now. And that's, I mean, how it's kind of crumbling around her. Because, like, the whole place, like, exploded, didn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so, um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of, I'm sure, imagery and stuff kind of taking place there that, um, once again, I haven't watched it long enough mm -hmm. to probably pick up on at this point. But, um, I mean, that movie always had a great cinematic style. And just in general, the imagery they used throughout that entire series was always pretty poignant. So, no, Dude, definitely I, so well. I, I freaking love the fight scene with Joker in the miniature Gotham setup. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Everything everything with that scene is just so Joker. And he's just... You could tell he's just having, like, 
the most fun <laughs> time in his life. Um, and I guess I just wanted to just mention the very last scene, which I feel like is just such an awesome closing just section. It's just such a cool way of ending it for Batman and Andrea. Like, they both have a really cool, like, bittersweet ending with both of them kind of just... They both kind of just know they're broken and that they're mm. just kind of destined to be alone. And, uh, like, a really cool thing is just Andrea's, like, final quote where um, she's, like, on the <laughs> she's like on the edge of this boat and this guy... Because, you know, she, she like, runs away. But, like, her, um, and this guy comes up to her and he's just, like, I'm sorry, do you want to... Or he says, hey, how are you? And then says, oh, I'm sorry, do you want to be alone? And she just kind of, like, stares off into the water and just says, I am... And he's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then uh, it just movie just ends with Batman sitting on top of a building, like kind of you can tell, kind of thinking about her. But then like sees the bat signal, and he just knows. Uh, I kind of added just one little note at the end of here, and I said, "That's how you end a Batman movie: me staring into the screen." So you can take that, take that as it is. But. Uh... Uh... Okay, I didn't pick up on that. So <laughs> I just I don't know. I was just that was my note was that's how you end a Batman movie. But all right. <laughs> I'm looking at something. Um but yeah, so <clears throat> anything else you wanted to add on to it? I kinda just wanted to gush about Mask of the Phantasm. I freaking love that movie. Oh, I could yeah. talk you, about you it anytime. Gushed. It was gross. No. <laughs> no, I mean it's solid, solid movie. Um I don't think I can add anything to it. Um it, it animated series and just anything related to it will probably always be my favorite just mm -hmm. you know iteration of batman but um just going back i mean i am still excited about seeing the new movie um i'm, I'm excited totally for you going... i hope you watch it yeah yeah so i uh, maybe we can have a more in-depth spoiler discussion if i ever get around to sacrificing three hours of my life to see it so well, we can <laughs> um so yeah that was my favorite batman movie what did uh what did you want to take some time talk about your own um, when we can, I mean, I know we've been talking about Batman for a while, so it doesn't need to be a big conversation. Honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite Batman movie. Like, is this more of a nostalgic of them... pick rather than a favorite? Just... Yeah, like I know we we're you were asking which one I want to talk about. Um, I figured you, know, you would Dark... chose the Dark Knight, but and here's the thing: out of all the Batman movies, I think ugh, you hear this come up a lot. That's probably the best movie. Yeah. Uh, with Batman in it, like. What they did with that movie was great. I mean, the plot was great. The acting was great. Ledger was great. Um, but I think what always kind of takes me out of that movie a little bit is it's not a Batman movie. It is it's a Joker movie, which mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, it's great for what it is. But I feel like that for a lot of you know Nolan's movies, like Batman Begins, a little less so. That definitely had more of a Batman focus, as hey, you know, it probably should. I, I would um, not to cut you off, but I would. I've tried to rewatch The Dark Knight a few times lately, and it just. I don't know. I feel like my, I feel like my liking for it has gone down. I actually feel like Begins is my favorite, out of the three Nolan movies. But sorry, go ahead. Oh no, um, and I don't disagree with that. Um, I, I, I don't know. I go back and forth on the Nolan, you know, trilogy. The third one definitely, you know, I'd put down at the lower end. But as far as Begins versus Dark Knight, I kind of go back in between. But even with that said, like. I don't know if there's any one thing about those movies that are my favorite Batman anything besides just the Joker being really mm -hmm. good in those movies. Like, um, I don't know. Like, I d I'm not a huge fan of Bale as Batman. He was fine. Um, he was just fine. Like Bruce, yeah. Like his Bruce Wayne was okay. Um, his Batman was just kind of there. Like he was a suit more than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he was cool to watch and I like what they did with, you know, the evolution of the character and his suit and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I didn't care about Bale a whole amount. Um, and I guess for me, if I'm thinking about any of the other Batman movies out there, uh, once again, it's going back to nostalgia. Cause you know, I was like watching this movie at the <laughs> same time I was watching animated series, mm -hmm. Batman forever. Um, which people, honestly, I feel like people have taken a little more favorably over recent years. I mean, there was definitely a, um, big you know a push a while back that this movie is garbage just kind of fall into that uh, that was still schumacher wasn't it mm -hmm. uh, that was, like yeah. his, that was his, his first, first one. one yeah his, his first one he did that in um, robin and you know there was definitely plenty of uh schumacher all over that movie um it wasn't quite as um oh man i'm trying to think of the politest way to say this it didn't go nearly as far as batman and robin did with some of the mm -hmm. schumacherisms but um 
you know, being a kid for one, I look at a lot of that stuff, the cheesy corny factor a little more favorably because it was fun back then. And I will say that's what the Batman movies have lost to a certain extent. Like people always want to take Batman to the super dark, broody um, kind of character because, you know, that is at his core. But think back to the Adam West Batmans. Like there is camp built into, you know, the mm -hmm. foundations of Batman. <clears throat> and I feel like this movie tries to find a balance between that. Like the Burton movies took a very different take kind of a twisted dark route to it um a little bit of camp but not much mm -hmm. um i feel like schumacher tried to bring it into that i don't know cartoony world a little I think more that's what I know, neon i think that's what i liked about the batman is it definitely it definitely gets oh, I was, I'm probably i'm sure there's people that disagree i think it was a little bit more light-hearted Maybe not quite as much as, like, the Schumacher movies, but, like, it at least wasn't as, like, realistic. Like the new one was lighthearted? No, no, no. Well, not wholly, but... It's not as grounded. It's just not saying? as grounded as The okay. Dark Knight. Like, it, it, it definitely gets kind of out there, and some of the people feel a little bit more cartoony, which I actually like. You mm. know, for, in some aspects, like, the Penguin, or, yeah, Penguin feels a little more cartoony. The Riddler feels a little bit more ridiculous. Oh, no. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fair. And I said, I, I can't really sit here and make a big case for forever being a good movie. Um, I mean, I'm sure, oh, I haven't watched it in a couple of years. I just if watched I it last watch night. It, <laughs> I'm sure I'd pick it apart. Um, but it was fun. Even, even when I watched it a few years ago, even though I, I knew at the time this was not like a good movie, it was a fun movie. It's fun. Um, yeah, it's a really cool watch. Like, it's colorful when it needs to be. Um, I'll tell you, I love Jim Carrey as the Riddler. I know he he's is, over the top for a lot of people. He is the absolute he, best part of that movie. He chews up the scenery, uh, man. Um, honestly, the worst part of that movie for me is anything with um, freaking Two-Face in it. No, oh, Two-Face? No, 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 um, yeah, freaking, um, oh, oh. Uh, Tommy um, Lee Jones? Yes. They, and don't worry, I love Tommy Lee Jones, but he was so miscast I think for that my, movie. <clears throat> my, okay, so I have a couple big problems with Two-Face. One, he acts too much like the Joker, which yeah, like that's it. He wasn't Two Face at all. Like the what's the way to say this? The characters in the Schumacher movies are exaggerated. Like mm -hmm. uh, Carrie's Riddler is Riddler times a thousand, right? Um, but this Two Face didn't feel like an elaborated or exasperated, that... you know, expanded version of Two Face. He just felt like a completely different. But character. if you think about it, you you could make the case that fits the Riddler maybe being that ridiculous the yeah two-face is supposed to be a district attorney he's not supposed to be ridiculous he's supposed to be like a perfect or was a professional person sorry i keep cutting you off <laughs> no it's fine i mean i guess that's what i'm saying like they didn't know how to use that character you're right they kind of wanted to make him a joker sometimes they were trying to make him compete with carrie because mm -hmm. here's the thing if you tried to play two-face closer or straighter to probably how you didn't you know expect that character to be he is going to be, like, every scene he's in, just overpowered but by Jim no Carrey. there's no competing with Jim Carrey, though. Yeah. I remember um, reading plenty of stories about how Tommy Lee Jones hated Jim Carrey. Um, I remember his famous quote, um, it was the, I don't know he walked out on one of the scenes, but it was like, after they did one of their scenes together, he turned to uh, Jim Carrey and said, I can't sanction your buffoonery. And then, like, you know, charged off the set, which is such a Tommy Lee Jones thing yeah. to say. Um, it just so it's fine uh, and interesting. It just it just seemed like such a strange casting, like 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 it, like I feel like if not a, well, I shouldn't say strange. Here's the thing too: he didn't need to be in the movie. Like it wasn't just a bad cast, but you could have had that same movie probably play out better without Tommy Lee Jones at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think his only impact he really had was you know taking out um, Robin's family, Chris O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. um, but that could have played out. You could have had any mob players. boss. You could have yeah. had Maroni or. You know, any mob boss do that. Um, yeah, so Two Face was kind of wasted there, but Carrie really solid, and I do like Kilmer. Once again, it's probably I, I, I said that earlier. I like Kilmer as Batman. I thought he was good. His his Batman is kind of boring. Mm -hmm. His Bruce Wayne though is not bad. Like he's kind of that you know kind of charmer, kind of like um, subdued mm -hmm. um, billionaire. But it worked well. They definitely tried to do a little bit with the Bruce Wayne character, how he tried to, you know, for a while he was giving up Batman. He's like, mm -hmm. I can be Bruce Wayne. Unless it was kind of a similar um, uh, story arc from Mask of the Phantasm. He's like, I can be happy too. I can mm -hmm. have 
both um, worlds well, and then realize he can't. Well, well, actually, I guess he at the end, he's like, I can be both. I can be Batman and mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne. But a really, um, a really cool aspect that they play with the movie is um, I don't like her character, but it's really cool. Then, yeah, it's really cool having her in there as like a, a psychotherapist or is that what mm -hmm. she, Yeah, it's really cool having her in there because it's really just interesting to see her kind of like like analyze Bruce Wayne and analyze Batman whenever she's around them because again to wear you know tights and go around and beat people up you'd have to be a pretty broken questionable individual so it's really cool to see her like like dealing with Bruce and like because there's a really cool scene where where there's a what the is doll. it no not the doll well that too but there's a really cool scene where Bruce goes into her office and on the wall there's a what is it? A, a, a Rorschach thing? And he goes yeah, up... I think it was the same scene. Like, he picks up the doll and he sees the Rorschach painting. Hey, I'm thinking something different. Yeah, no, that's um, the same scene. I'm just saying... Like, I like the part where he sees the Rorschach painting. Yeah. And he says, oh, you got you got something for bats? And she's like, no, that's a Rorschach painting. Meaning, you know... You got bats on the brain, man. You got bats on the brain. Yeah, so it's it's really cool. Like, sorry, I, remember... I just want to add that... <laughs> I think I, it probably feel it more now in recent viewings, but I'm pretty mixed on her character. Like, I like those scenes with her and Bruce. Also, I think those were probably the best, like, character moments in that whole movie was seeing them interact and kind of, you know, look at the psychology of Bruce Wayne versus Batman. She's really... At the same time, I hated her when she was all, oh, you know, she's all boy over Batman. Yeah, no. seeing her get all hot and bothered and, like... Yeah, like that was an extreme I didn't really... Yeah, uh, that, that's a good thing to bring up. Like, yeah, it's very, like... She puts up the bat signal and just shows up there like half nude. Ready to get it on, yeah. It yeah, was, it's... Oof, a little much. Um, so yeah, I mean that movie. <laughs> once again, I can't sit here and argue. It was a good movie. There was plenty of miscasting and like weird character arcs in there. But I, you know, I will always say I think it was fun. It was definitely a movie that was made to sell toys for sure because I had most of them as a you kid. You know what? So, what am I? I just um, thought about it. Something I didn't like about it is I. I very much dislike the, the the Chris O'Donnell character. I know he's Robin, but like t t Bruce Wayne, what do what you? He adopted like a thirty year old man. Like what? yeah, I mean they were yeah. I mean I didn't. I don't hate Chris O'Donnell as Robin. Um, I mean, he he was fine for that world, but yeah, it was definitely a very older take for Robin. Like it didn't feel like um, uh, the Dick Grayson Robin, even though I know no. that's one he was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably felt like. Oh man, what was the um not Jason Todd? It was Jason um, Todd, Richard Richard uh, something. Oh there's another one. <sighs> Do you not have to try and remember? <laughs> I'm not going to. Um either way, he, he felt like a, he was a different Robin, just straight up. Mm -hmm. I mean he had you know the Dick Grayson name. But that Jason was about Todd it. the one that gets kidnapped and beaten up by yeah, the Yeah, that's Red Hood, yeah. yeah. Um but regardless, I mean, I enjoy it for what it was. I thought it was fun. And I do like that every once in a while. Not every movie has to be this, you know, super introspective, uh, perfectly crafted masterpiece, which I know is kind of where everybody's kind of looking at this new Batman movie to be. like. That movie is so funny. Like, it's just kind of funny. It's yeah. fun. It's definitely something that you want to turn your mind off a little bit towards. I know some people hate that um, phrasing. I'm not saying you have to, you know, ignore plot holes and stuff, but... Enjoy it for what it is. Um, I think you can go into that with a more favorable, uh, favorable mindset than you can with Batman and Robin. Like, uh, there's far more issues I think with that movie from a structural standpoint, a character standpoint. That's harder to watch that movie and enjoy it. I think at mm -hmm. least in Forever, there's a, you know, there's a thread of a decent movie in there and some decent oh, acting. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, that elevates it some um, to where I think at least I have a favorable um, opinion on it looking back, you know, 20 some odd years. Yeah, I but agree. I think that. I think Forever is a much more respectable Batman film than Batman and Robin. I'm not going to go into Batman. We could do a whole episode no. on. He is probably the worst Batman. I, uh, it's George Clooney. The Ice Age. Uh, George Clooney. I think the problem with George is like he just didn't seem like he gave two licks about being there, like it. Yeah. He just seemed like George was too cool for school, you know. Well, he played George. He played George Clooney. I mean, it wasn't yeah. George Clooney playing Batman. It was just it, Batman was George Clooney. Um, I think I the, don't know. the problem is is there was not a single good casting in that movie. 
If he the really, the only thing that would keep me going in that movie was Arnold. Man, I'm not saying he was good casting. And he but sucked. He's he just was... funny because he's Arnold, though. And that's all it was. I, I mean, shouldn't say he sucked. He, he just good, wasn't. You no know, memes out of the thing, but it's just I'm just like thinking on that movie. There's not one good casting. Uma Thurman, not great. Whatever they did to Bane in that movie, not great. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know.